This is the supplemental video for notes 3.7, multi-step factoring. Multi-step factoring or mixed factoring means simply that you're going to have to use more than one method to factor a polynomial. Step one is to always check for a greatest common factor. That should be the first thought anytime you look at a problem that needs to be factored. Then you're going to have to check for one of the following patterns and factor. You could have a trinomial where a equals 1. You could have a trinomial where a is greater than 1. You could factor by grouping if you have four terms. You could have a difference or sum of cubes. Or last but not least, you could have a difference of squares. Or you could have multiple combinations of one of any of these as well. So every time you factor, the most important step is this last step. Check to see if you can factor again. So after you've factored once, see if you can factor again, and then check to see if you can factor one more time at least. Okay, so let's look at some examples to see where this applies. We have to factor each polynomial here. The first one is 2xy squared minus 50x. I'm looking at both terms and I'm looking for a greatest common factor. It looks like we can factor out a 2 because 2 is the largest number that divides into 2 and 50, and they both have an x in common, so I can factor out as an x as well. So I'm going to, the GCF is 2x, I'm going to factor that out, and then I'm going to take what's left over and put it in parentheses. So 2 divided by 2 once, x goes into x once, and we're left with just y squared. Over here, 50 divided by 2 is 25, and the x's cancel out. So we're just left with y squared minus 25 in parentheses. You have two terms here, and I can take the square root of both of those because they're both perfect squares. So this is a difference of squares. So the square root of y squared is just going to be y. The square root of 25 is going to be 5. So my final answer is going to be 2x. Remember always to include your GCF. And then we know the formula for a difference of squares. It's going to be y plus 5 y minus 5. And again, order doesn't matter, so I could have also written 2x y minus 5 times y plus 5. Either one's fine. Okay, let's look at the next example. I have 3y squared minus 15y minus 252. First thing I'm going to do is check for a greatest common factor. Usually we want to pick the smallest number, and the ideal, ideal is if this number divides into all three terms, and this is the case we have here. So the smallest number of all three is three, and three happens to go into each of these terms. So let's go ahead and factor out a three. This one doesn't have a y, so we can't factor out a variable. So three divided by three is one, so we're just left with y squared. 15 divided by three is five, so a negative five and the y drops down. And then 252 divided by three is 84. So in parentheses, we have y squared minus 5y minus 84. Here we have a trinomial where the first term is 1. We want to see if we can factor this a little further. So let's write all the factors of 84 till we get to, to 2 that have a difference of 5. Remember, the negative sign here means that your factors will have opposite signs. The bigger number will be a negative number. So let's try. We have 1 and 84. 2 and 42, 3 and 28, 4 and 21, 6 and 14, getting closer, and then finally 7 and 12. Well, and this will work, right? If we make 7 a positive, 12 a negative, 7 minus 12 is going to give me a negative 5. So we're going to bust out this B and replace, we're going to write Y minus 12, Y plus 7. Or you can write it in the opposite order. You can write 3 times Y plus 7, Y minus 12. Remember, do not forget your greatest common factor. Always include that in your final answer. And again, order does not matter. All right, let's go to problem number three. I've got 4x to the fourth minus 64. Again, you've got two terms here. I'm going to check. First thing I'm going to do is check to see 4 is the smallest of the two numbers. I'm going to check to see if 4 divides into 4 and 64, and it does, so that's great. I can factor out a 4. I cannot factor out an x variable because this one, this 64, doesn't have a variable. So let's go ahead and get started. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we're just left with x to the 4th. 64 divided by 4 is 16. So I have x to the 4th minus 16 in parentheses. Well, I've got two terms. Both are perfect squares, so I can go ahead. This is the difference of squares. I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both terms. 
If I take the square root of x to the fourth, I'm going to have x squared. If I take the square root of 16, I'll have 4. So I'm going to end up with, bring down my 4, remember 4, always include your GCF. I'm going to end up with x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. Almost done, but not quite yet. Remember what I said, always check to see if you can factor again. In this case, I can't factor x squared plus 4, but I'm looking over here, x squared minus 4. I've got two terms, a minus sign in between, and each one is a perfect square. So this is going to be a difference of squares again. So I can take the square root of x squared and get x, take the square root of 4 and get 2. So my final answer is going to be 4 times x squared plus 4, but I'm going to factor x squared minus 4 into a difference of squares. It becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay? All right. Now let's look at m to the 6th minus 1. This is, looks like a deceptively easy problem but it's not quite as easy as we think. So let's look at this. There's no greatest common factor. However, I do notice that I have m to the sixth. I can actually take the square root of that. The square root of m to the sixth is gonna be m to the third. I can take the square root of one and get one. So that's gonna leave me with m to the third minus one, m to the third plus one. And even though we'd like to think we're done at that point, Again, always check to see if we can factor again, and guess what? We can. We can take the cube root of m to the third and get m, the cube root of 1 and get 1, and we actually have, this is going to end up being a difference of cubes, and this can be factored into a sum of cubes. So we can break m cubed minus 1 into m minus 1. Remember, minus plus plus. So square your first term. m times m is m squared multiply the two together, 1 times m is just m, and then square your last term, 1 times 1 is 1. So, or soap, same, same sign, opposite signs, always positive. Okay, now what, let's go ahead and factor m cubed plus 1. Remember, the cube root of m to the, m to the power of 3 is just going to be m. The cube root of 1 is just 1, so I'm going to end up with m plus 1 here. And then in parentheses, m times m is m squared. m times 1 is just 1m or m. And lastly, 1 times 1 is 1. And this is going to be a plus minus plus or soap. Same, opposite, always positive. Now, there's nothing more we can do here. We are finally done factoring. Okay, let's look at maybe three more examples. Here's number five. I have 6x to the third plus 54y to the third. First thing I'm going to do is check for a greatest common factor. In this case, I can factor out a 2 out of each of these terms. So factor out a 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Bring down the x cubed. 54 divided by 2 is 27. Bring down the y cubed. I think I'm sure you're probably noticing the same thing. I'm noticing that this is actually a sum of cubes, right? I can take the cube root of 8x to the third. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x to the third is just x. The cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of y to the third is going to be just y. So I'm going to take bring down your GCF. I'm going to take 2x, and that's going to be the first term. 3y will be this last or second term. A plus sign because we're started with plus, right? We're going to inherit that sign. Then we take the first term and square it. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared. We multiply the 2 together. 2 times 3 is 6, so it's going to be 6xy. And then for the last term, I have to square this term here. 3 times 3 is 9. y times y is y squared. This is plus minus plus, or you can think of it as same opposite, always positive. So now let's look at the next one. Six is a little bit tricky. It's 2b minus 28a squared b plus 10ab. Well, first step is to rewrite it in standard form. And standard form means that you're writing it from taking the lowest letter in the alphabet to the highest letter or the last or the first letter in the alphabet to the last letter in the alphabet. So the A should be written first. And because this one has a higher exponent than this A, 
we should really rewrite this equation as negative 28a squared b plus 10ab. Now that we don't have any a's, we'll write 2b and that will be last because it doesn't have any a's. Now, what can we factor out? Again, look at all the numbers, 28, 10, and 2. 2 is the smallest, so we want to see if we can factor out a 2 out of all of these terms. And we always want our first term to be positive. So we're going to not just factor out a 2, but a negative 2. Now let's check for the variables. We've got a, a, but no a here, so we can't factor out an a. Here I've got a b, a b, and a b, so we can factor out a b. So I'm going to divide each of these terms by negative 2b, negative 2b, and negative 2b. So that's my greatest common factor. Negative 28 divided by a negative 2 is a positive 14. The a squared drops down, but the 2b's will cancel out. Over here, I have 10 minus 2, and which is going to give me a negative 5. The a drops down, but the b's will cancel out again. And then last but not least, I have 2 divided by a negative 2, which gives me a negative 1, and the b's cancel out. So I'm left with 14a squared minus 5a minus 1. Well, one of the things I'm noticing here is my a is greater than 1. So this is a trinomial where a is greater than 1. Let's try and factor that. Do you remember those steps? What we need to do is, first thing we need to do is take 14 and multiply it by 1. 14 times 1 is 14. So I'm going to write down all the numbers that multiply together to give me 14. That's 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. Well, look at this. This is negative 5. So if I make this 2 positive and the 7 negative, I can get negative 5. Remember, the negative sign here means that I'm looking for two numbers that have opposite signs. The bigger number has to be negative. So for what am I going to do now? I'm going to copy down the first and the last terms. I'm going to copy down 14a squared and negative 1, and I'm going to bust out that b. So negative 5a actually becomes positive 2a and negative 7a. So I'm busting out the b. Now I have four terms, so I have to use factor by grouping to solve this. So let's go ahead and put a little dashed line down the middle. So we've got two terms on the left of the dashed line and two terms on the right of the dashed line. So I've got 14a squared plus 2a. The GCF for both of those would be 2a, right? 2 is the smallest number that divides into 14 and 2. They both have a variable. Look at the one with the smallest exponent. That happens to be this one right here, a to the power of 1. So I can only factor out an a. So 2a gets factored out. 14 divided by 2 is 7. a to the power of 2 divided by a to the power of 1. Remember, subtract your exponents. 2 minus 1 is just 1, so this becomes just an a or a to the power of 1. Over here, 2 divided by, divided by 2 is 1. a divided by a is 1. So I'm left in parentheses with 7a plus 1. Now, over here, they don't have anything in common. They don't have a variable in common. They don't have a number that I can factor out. However, I need this first term to be positive, so I'm going to have to divide by a negative 1. So my GCF is just going to simply be negative 1. Negative 7 divided by negative 1 gives me a positive 7, and the A drops down. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 gives me a positive 1. So I've got the same common binomial in parentheses, so I know I'm doing this problem correctly. So my final answer is going to be take my GCFs and put them together in a set of parentheses. So 2A minus 1 goes in one set of parentheses. The common binomial 7A plus 1 goes in the other set of parentheses. However, let's not forget this GCF that we factored out in the very beginning of the problem. So I need to include that in my final answer. So my final answer will be negative 2B times the quantity 2A minus 1 times the quantity 7A plus 1. So a lot going on there. All right, let's look at one final example. This is 3x to the third plus 6x squared minus 27x minus 54. Again, as always, let's check for a greatest common factor. So the smallest number here is 3, so I'm going to see if a 3 can divide into 3, 6, 27, and 54, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 3. I can't factor out an x because I have an x here, 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 but not here. So when I factor out or divide by 3, I'm left with 3 divided by 3 just gives me x to the power of 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and I bring down the x squared. 27 divided by 3 is 9, or negative 9, bring down the x. And last but not least, negative 54 divided by 3 is negative 8.
14. So I've got four terms here. So we're going to do factor by grouping. I'm going to split them into two sets of two terms each by drawing a dashed line right down the middle. Let's look at x to the power of 3 plus 2x squared. I can factor out an x squared term out of both of those. So x to the third divided by x squared is going to just be x. Remember, subtract your exponents. 3 minus 2 is 1. Over here, I have 2x squared divided by x squared. The x squared terms cancel out, and I'm just left with plus 2 right here. Over here, I have negative 9x minus 18. So I can divide negative 9 into both of these terms. So when I divide negative 9 by negative 9, I get x. So x in parentheses, negative 9 outside the parentheses. Negative 18 divided by negative 9 is a positive 2. So let's check ourselves. We have the same common binomial, so we know we did it right. So final answer is going to be x plus 2 times the quantity x squared minus 9. Remember your GCF. Do not forget about that. But let's step back for a moment. Are we really done? Hmm. I've got the 3. I've got x plus 2. But I've got an x squared term here. In fact, I've got two terms, a minus sign in between, and both are perfect squares. So guess what? We've got to factor one more time. We have a difference of squares. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. So my final answer will actually be 3. Remember our greatest common factor times x plus 2. And we're going to replace this, the x squared minus 9, with x plus 3, x minus 3. So this will be my final answer.